In this video, we're going to compare the GoPro Max versus Insta360 ONE X in low light, side by side, in realistic low light shooting conditions. I'll also show you how to reduce blur in low light. I'll also show you a new technique that I discovered for getting the best low light quality on the GoPro Max. I'll also show you Kandao's new camera, which has been hiding in plain sight. So with low light, there are two main issues. One is noise, and the other one is blur. So with both the Max and the One X, you can control the shutter speed when shooting in low light to minimize blur. When the camera is stationary on a tripod, then it's best to use a slow shutter speed. So here's the One X and the GoPro Max. In this indoor lighting scene, the Max and One X have a similar amount of detail and noise. But when we look very closely, the Max looks slightly more detailed and has slightly less luminance and chroma noise than the One X. On the other hand, if you apply Premier's VR Sharpen effect, they look much more similar. Now to make the comparison fair, I also applied VR Sharpen to the Max. But because Max is already sharpened, it doesn't benefit as much from VR Sharpen. Sharpen on, sharpen off. On, off. On, off. Okay, let's move on. Incidentally, in this close-up view, you can also see the drifting of the Max in real time. In terms of dynamic range, they appear the same with similar amounts of highlight and shadow detail. For white balance, the One X looks a little reddish. The Max looks more accurate from the way I remember the scene. Now let's look at an outdoor scene with the same exposure settings. Even with the same settings, there's a noticeable difference. The Max looks a little more detailed and the One X shadows look darker and have more chroma noise. But if you apply VR Sharpen and you lift the shadows, you'll see a similar amount of detail in the One X, although chroma noise is still higher. Here's a magnified view showing the detail and noise of the Max and the One X before editing and then with VR sharpening and shadow lifting. When we're not moving too fast, we can use a shutter speed of 1 over 60th. But this forces a camera to use a higher ISO, which means more noise. Now both the Max and the One X did really well, but which one did better? We can see that the One X has less noise and more detail. On the Max, fine details are lost. On the other hand, One X has more motion blur, which surprised me because I thought they were using the same shutter speed after all. Now, I believe this means that the Max is using a higher actual shutter speed and a higher ISO than the One X. And that's why the Max has less detail but also has less motion blur. When we're moving faster, we have to use an even higher shutter speed, such as 1 over 125th. Or in Insta360 ONE X settings, this is called shutter faster. At this setting, somehow the max exposure is a bit dim compared to the ONE X. One X also has noticeably more detail, while fine details look smeared on the Max. On the other hand, Max has less noticeable noise than the One X, especially chroma noise. This could mean that Max uses more aggressive noise reduction. Now let's look at how the cameras handled fast movement in low light. Unlike the previous test, the Max and the One X seem to have similar amounts of motion blur. However, it seems that the Max is slightly more stable. 
footsteps and the bouncing up and down movement are less noticeable on the Mac. In terms of color, the color in the 1X looks more pleasant, especially for skin tone. On the Max, my skin looks grayish in this low light, high ISO sample, while the 1X shows a natural skin tone. Now let's compare the GoPro Max and the Insta360 1X in extreme low light. Generally, consumer 360 cameras don't do well in low light. That's because they have small sensors and you're usually only seeing a magnified cropped portion of the entire video. This makes noise even more prominent. If it's too dark to read the book, it'll be too dark for a consumer 360 camera. If possible, you should use a tripod so you can use a slower shutter speed and a lower ISO. But I still want to show you how the One X and Max look in extreme low light with movement and a once over 60 shutter speed. At first glance, the 1X on the right looks much better with better detail and far less noise than the Max. However, if I darken the shadows and increase the color temperature on the Max, then they look much more similar. On the other hand, 1X still has noticeably more detail, less luminance noise, and more accurate colors. In terms of stabilization, Max looks a bit better, and again has less motion blur. I also compared the Max in Hero non-360 mode against the One X. I was surprised that the Max had better video quality in its non-360 Hero mode compared to its 360 mode. But when I adjusted the distortion and zoom on the One X to match the Max Hero mode, I found that the One X still had better detail and more accurate colors. <laughs> now before I show you Kandao's new camera, FYI, I'm also working on my comprehensive GoPro Max review and comparison with the Insta360 ONE X. I'll also compare the Max and non-360 cameras including GoPro Hero 8 and DJI Osmo Action. Don't miss it, hit subscribe and the like button. Now, Kandals actually showed us a glimpse of their new camera in their teaser trailer. Let's see if you can spot it. Now if you look at the last part of that video, you can see a glimpse of this new camera. So it shows a two lens design. The video boasts about higher resolution, although it's not clear if they mean photo resolution or video resolution. I wonder if these are photos or actually frame grabs, as crazy as that sounds. Now, I was impressed with this part of the video that shows jellyfish shot in an aquarium. It seems to show incredible low light performance. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And finally, there's going to be a new announcement from Insta360. They've said it's going to be a quote, big announcement. Don't miss it. Hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. I'll see you in 360.